Oh, hi, divers. <laughs> this is so neat. Alec Pierce Scuba, another episode of Vintage Scuba. And I got some neat stuff to show you today. A couple of episodes back, I can't remember. Kevin takes care of all the details of which one occurs when. A couple of episodes, or at least an episode or so, we talked about underwater photography. And I did mention, I had, I had that Aqua Eye, that flexible bag that you could buy, $6.95. A flexible bag, heavy flexible, with a glass plate and a clamp. You put your camera inside. If you saw that, if you haven't seen that, let's go back and look at it. Anyway, early underwater photographer, something like that. And in that episode, I mentioned that back in the 60s, we used to build our own housings. There simply weren't housings available. If you had a camera, you wanted to go take pictures underwater, we couldn't, unless you built a housing. And I had mentioned in there that there was a, a chap by the name of Mark Togweiler who, uh, who wrote a book on how to build housing. Everybody was doing it, but nobody had written it down. And this chap, he's pretty smart. He, uh, he actually wrote down how, and I, and I found this, as I was looking for catalogs, I found that book by Marty Togwater. There it is. Just in case any of you guys ever think that maybe I'm pulling your leg on some of this stuff. I've been known to, to pull people's legs. There's no question about it. <laughs> but when I say something about the old days of scuba diving, about equipment, scuba equipment, or about vintage scuba, you can pretty much take it to the bank. There it is. That's the book, How to Build Your Own Underwater Camera Housing by Mark Tongwater. And this was a very popular book. And it starts, at the, it starts at the very beginning. I almost said that. It starts at the very beginning. How stupid is that? It starts, and he explains how you go and you buy plexiglass, pieces of plexiglass. And you measure your camera. Look at, look at measuring the camera. <laughs> and you cut the plexiglass to fit, and you get the right glue, and you put a base in for the camera, and you measure, and you fit it. And at the back, he's got a place where you can buy these controls. Exactly right, yeah. Even for movie cameras. So that's kind of neat. I, it was funny that I mentioned that on that, on that episode. Just, you remember that, Kevin. And I mentioned about there was a book called How to Build Your Own Underwater Camera Housing by Mark Togwater. There it is right there. I don't know if you'll see this book around anywhere else. I'm sure there's some of them around, but it's not, not on Amazon. You won't find those on Amazon. Okay. Anyway, that's not what I'm here to talk about today. I do have a couple of interesting things to share with you, though. I want to talk about scuba gear companies. Again, all right, a little twist this time. One of the largest scuba gear companies that ever existed was a company called Healthways. Now, interesting enough, Healthways is still around. They just don't sell scuba gear. Uh, they, they sell fitness equipment, all, all different types of equipment for sports, fitness equipment and so on. But quite a long time ago, they stopped uh, making scuba equipment. And that was a shame because their scuba equipment was extremely well made, strong, very rugged, designed really well. They were, they were innovators in their day. And there was a big company. At one time, Healthways was making the valves for scuba tanks for many of the companies out there, so U.S. Divers and, and, and uh, Scuba Pro and Sportsways, a lot of them, they got their valves from Healthways. Healthways was a manufacturer and they made lots of valves. And they would brand them with the other company's name. They didn't mind doing that. And they had their own tanks with their own valves in them and with their name on it as well. As a matter of fact, uh, that particular practice of a company making a product and then selling to other companies with the brand name. You know about that. That's very common today. One company makes something, and several different companies buy it, and they put their own name on it. And all this is it. It's the only one. Everybody has the same one. Healthways did that as well. And this is an interesting fact that very, very few people know. And uh, you folks out there that are big Scuba Pro fans, first of all, let me salute you. Uh, scuba Gear, uh, Scuba Pro makes fine equipment. Nothing wrong with being a Scuba Pro fan. They make excellent equipment. But when they started back in the 50s, they didn't have any equipment. They started the Scuba Gear Company. They didn't have very much to sell. They wanted to expand their range, but they didn't have any equipment. They wanted to get into making regulators. And you know that today, Scuba Pro regulators are considered you know, among the finest available. Their first regulator was made by Healthways. <laughs> this company, which had been in the business for some time, and had a great reputation for a rugged and fine regulator, they actually made the first regulator for Scuba Pro. It is a Healthways regulator. I have it. I have the Healthways version, and I have the Scuba Pro version. They're identical, except that the Healthways has a Healthways decal, and the Scuba Pro has a Scuba Pro decal. Not very many people know that. Even Scuba Pro people 
won't know that. So this is a typical catalog from, from those early days. You see there's not much color to it, but they had a lot of neat stuff. Boy, boy, I'm going to try to show you a couple of things in here. Backpacks. You don't see backpacks in catalogs anymore because we don't use them. So these old catalogs are great sources of vintage information. There's, a, there's their double hose regulator. They had a double hose regulator. The original double hose regulator from Healthways had a really unique name. It was called Scuba. I, I'm serious. I don't know how they did that. But their regulator was called Scuba. Now, the word, name, the word Scuba is not trademarked. So I guess it was possible at that time, many for them to do that. And then they came out a little later with an improved version. They called it the Scuba Deluxe. <laughs> anyway, pretty neat. But they also had among the first and the finest single hose regulators. And they had some pretty innovative ones. Uh, pretty standard uh, Scuba Air 300 here. But uh, this one has a J-Vel built into the first stage. I don't know if you can squeeze in there. Can you see that, Kevin? And you might notice as well that the knob, I'm going to show you some of these regulators in, in a later episode of Vinci Scuba. But you see the knob, it didn't have a big yoke knob on the outside. It was an internal knob. So it wouldn't catch. You guys in California swimming through the kelp, you wouldn't come to the surface with a bunch of kelp wrapped around your regulator if you were using it healthways. This Scuba 300 was unique as well because it had a sonic reserve. I've mentioned that in passing a couple of times. A sonic reserve. And it was pretty neat. When the tank pressure got down to 300 psi, it would wrap. When you inhale, you would hear. The tank would tell you that you're getting low on air. So they had some pretty neat masks and fins and snorkels. Uh, pretty neat equipment out there. Let me show you something else that they had. And this is a scuba catalog. You pick up this up in your, in your dock. They had a compressor, a couple compressors, but this is their compressor at this particular time. And they had compressors because a lot of scuba divers had their own compressor. There weren't very many dive stores. So you lived in a small town in the middle of Minnesota or someplace like that, and you wanted to be you wanted to scuba dive, you couldn't get compressed air. So sometimes a, a small group, maybe a club, or individuals would actually buy compressors. So all that kind of stuff was available. Well, let me show you this. This is pretty neat. When's the last time that you saw a scuba diving catalog from a scuba store, your local dive store, <clears throat> and in that catalog you saw for sale a submarine. That's right, Healthways had a submarine for sale. I saw one of these not too long ago. It's in a scuba museum and it's in great shape. It looks like it's in great shape. Made of fiberglass. A submarine for sale at your local dive store. How about that? Now this is what's called a wet sub, not a dry sub. A dry sub is the type of submarine the military uses. All the men get inside to close the door and down they go. This is a wet sub. So you can see it doesn't have a canopy on it. And so one or two scuba divers would sit in this with their scuba gear. And then when they were ready to go, they'd press the button and steer and off they would go, carry them around. Sort of like a big DPV, a big diver propulsion vehicle. So Healthways is a big, big company. And, and this, is, this is their catalog uh, uh, from 63. And then in 65, you see they got into, into um, color pictures, so they got better. And the, some of the other equipment they sell us on the back, they had shooting equipment and skiing and so on, but uh, they were known, of course, for their scuba gear, spear guns and everything else. Spear guns and submarines, how about that? This is 1968, you see the catalogs are getting a little fancier, and then much later they're getting into the stylish catalogs. This was in 71, which is pretty much the last year that Healthways, this particular company, was in business. And now you see how much they've changed. Now every page is in color, lots of regulators, no two-hose regulator this time. It's gone now. Tanks and everything is in there. So that is one big company that you don't see anymore, and it's a shame. The equipment was very, very good. I want to tell you, tell you about another, uh, another thing. This is the third thing, to Mark, I told you about. And that here's something else that's really interesting. And some of you will, will recognize this, some of the older divers in particular. Or if you live in New York City, if you live in Manhattan or you live in New York in that area, then you may know about this. In about 1960, I, uh, I was certified. I was certified in 1960, actually. And uh, Skin Diver Magazine had started the year before, 1959. And in Skin Diver Magazine, the first and uh, the biggest, the longest running magazine that ever existed, is gone now, stopped. Uh, great magazine, spear fishing and treasure hunting and all kinds of stuff in there. It was just great. I was 10 years old at the time, or 12 maybe. And uh, just a fantastic magazine came out every month. Oh boy, I raced to the store to see if 
pay for it and get it in. Uh, there was a full page ad every issue from Central Skin Divers in Jamaica, New York. Now, Jamaica, if you don't know, is, is, is a little uh, east of uh, Manhattan. Uh, and uh, uh, well, it's very common if you live in that area, you know where Jamaica, New York is. They now have a store as well in, the store is still there. They now have a store apparently in downtown Manhattan. I've not seen that store. But anyway, uh, they had all kinds of neat stuff and it was a discount store. Uh, you were like a Walmart today, a discount store. So, uh, you know, you could buy tanks for a hundred bucks. They haven't gone up much in price over the years, but you could buy a nice pair of fins for 10 bucks, a nice mask for 6.95, all that kind of stuff. And of course I was a, a very, just a boy, didn't have too much money. I lived in a small town in Ontario. We didn't have any dive stores in Ontario, trust me. I don't know if there were very many in Canada at that time, but in any event, <clears throat> I wanted to get some equipment. And uh, they had a nice big ad every uh, month. And uh, this, uh, this chap, the name of Honest Archie. Honest Archie was his name. There's a picture of him right there. Honest Archie. <laughs> he was the owner of Central Skin Divers. I've been reading these ads and, oh, I'd like to get that. Oh, that's really good. It's a good price too, you know. And it was hard in those days to see if it was a good price. We didn't have Google or, or Amazon to check the prices or eBay, none of that stuff. But anyway, I needed a pair of fins. And I saw the fins I wanted. And uh, they were uh, uh, called duck feet. Very popular fin back in the old days. Probably weighed about 10 pounds each. No, not quite. And they're made of gum rubber. And uh, our Honest Archie had a sale on duck feet. And these particular duck feet fins he had on sale were UDT training fins. They were stamped right on the side. UDT training fins. Now, I don't know what that meant. I don't know if he stamped it. I don't know if there were rejects from the Navy. I have no idea. But fins from the underwater demolition team training, I'm picturing maybe some famous Marine used the, uh, and he had these on sale for $9.95. And I got the money together somehow, and I put it into an envelope with a letter to Honest Archie saying, blah, 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 you know, my address and so on, and sent him down the money. $9.95. I think I sent, I sent him $10. And I waited, and I waited. And about 10 days or two weeks later, I got a box from Jamaica, New York. <laughs> you think I wasn't excited. Oh boy, I got this box and I ripped that open and I got these beautiful fins. I still have them. I used them for many, many years. I have pictures of me, black and white pictures of me using those fins. Wonderful fins. And now the rest of the story. Inside the box was a dollar bill. He sent me back the fins and a dollar bill. Shipping was free even across the border. Try that today. Shipping was free. In fact, it says right on here, I think, uh, shipping free on one of these. Shipping is free with everything. And there were no taxes. There was no sales tax. So there was no taxes. And in those days, the Canadian dollar was worth more than the American dollar. So Honest Archie lived up to his name. Lived up to his name. He sent me the fins, made a young diver very, very happy. And he put an extra dollar in there because of the exchange rate and everything else and shipped them out to me. I still have those fins. Uh, it was not too long ago, a few years ago, that I was uh, visiting in New York. It's one of our favorite places to visit. Manhattan's a really neat place to visit. And before I went down this time, I called Central Skin Divers and I spoke to Honest Archie's son, who is still running. I don't know if he's going to see this video or not, but I spoke to him. He's very, very nice on the phone. And he told me about the new store in Manhattan. Unfortunately, on that particular trip, I did not get a chance to go out there. But Central Skin Divers, well, well known. Now, Central Skin Divers, unlike Healthways or Voight or U.S. Divers and those companies, Central Skin Divers is not a manufacturer. No, no. This is like a, they're a distributor. They're a big retail store. And they sold, they had these catalogs. This is online from the 60s. You see, they send these catalogs out. You see on the back, they put a stamp on it and mail it out to you. And you get this catalog in the mail with pictures on it. And, and, and all the kind of gear, those all kinds of gear, all kinds of gear, all brands in it, health races in here, voids in here, US divers, all in here. And you go through the catalog and you would pick out what you want, wetsuits, spear guns, snorkeling, you pick out what you want, fill out the order form at the back and send it off to Honest Archie with your money and it would arrive in the mail. And they had smaller ones as well that came out a little later and these ones had a little order form inside like so. And that's how scuba gear in many cases was distributed across North America in the old days. So there you go, a couple of companies, Healthways, a very, very big company, and then one of those very large distribution companies as well. Not too many of these companies left, a few of them, but uh, this is one of the famous ones. I hope you like that story about my fins that I still have. Maybe I'll show them to you sometime.
That was a lot of fun back in the old days. And I hope you're enjoying and maybe picking up some ideas and just getting a kick, particularly you old divers, about what it was like to scuba dive in the old days, in the 50s and the 60s. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Alec Pierce, Vinti Scuba. Talk to you again real soon.